Purdue's prosecutor's office has requested another three years of preventive prison against former president Pedro Castillo. In Greece, a passenger train with over 350 passengers collided with a freight train, killing at least 36 people and injuring more than 80 others. Israelis called for a nationwide protest against the judicial reform promoted by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the south. I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada. And the prosecutor's office of Peru has requested on Tuesday another three has requested on Tuesday another three years of preventive prison against the former president Pedro Castillo, currently imprisoned. The decision of the second Supreme Transitory Prosecutor's Office specialized in crimes committed by public officials also covers the former ministers Juan Silva Villegas and Heiner Alvarado. The former president is currently serving an 18-month preventive detention for the investigation the alleged crime of rebellion for having ordered the dissolution of the parliament at the beginning of last year, December. Castillo is awaiting a response from the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights to an appeal filed by his former Minister of Defense, Walter Ayala. The appeal filed by Ayala argues that Castillo's dismissal is illegal because he was dismissed without the parliament complying with the protocol established by the law. On Tuesday, Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador responded to the questioning of his electoral reform by the U.S. State Department. During his morning conference to the nation, the Mexican president referred to the statements made by the State Department, headed by Anthony Blinken, who criticized the Mexican government for its electoral reform and assured that the United States supports independent electoral institutions. And the Secretary of the Security Council of the Russian Federation, Nikolai Patrushev, accused on Tuesday the United States of forcing Russia's partners to break all ties with Moscow. The statement of Nikolai Patrushev come within the framework of a visit to Venezuela, fulfilling an intense work agenda. Patrushev explained that Washington and its European allies intend to create a global colonial empire for which he thanked the courage of governments and peoples such as that of Venezuela, who have condemned the destructive policy unleashed against Russia. The expert also acknowledged that these are very demanding times for humanity. In Ecuador, the funeral of the indigenous leader Eduardo Mendo took place with the presence of family members and uh, several leaders of native peoples. Eduardo Mendua, a co-fan national from the region of Sucumbios, was the head of Cunaya's international relations and leader in the fight against the exploitation and the contamination of the Amazon. The last farewell was held in the Durendo community with the participation of the governing council of the Confederation of Indigenous Nationalities of Ecuador. This case of our comrade Eduardo Mendua cannot go unpunished. Those responsible for the act must be brought to justice in a material way, but also with the responsibility of where the pressure comes from to generate chaos and division in the territory. This is absolutely clear. It is not an action of the last few days, but rather the pressure exerted in more than eight years in the territory of the Aikofan nationality here in the Dureno community. Therefore, in the first instance, it is the pressure of the petroleum companies of Pedro Ecuador through the different governments in office that have generated pressure in the territory and have generated division among the brothers of the same nationality. The indigenous leader and Kunayas president, Leonidas Ziza, said the organization will take Eduardo Mendua's murder case to various international instances. 
We need to immediately speak out at the international level and take this case to the international institutions, the OAS, the United Nations, and we are right now making a legal assessment so that it can be taken to the Inter-American Court of Human Rights and as an urgent mechanism to the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. Because this has to do with other similar problems that the indigenous peoples are going through worldwide. That is why in this process that we have decided from the national level to the last territory of the indigenous people, we are going to remain united and this is not going to remain unpunished. For the memory of our comrade Eduardo Mendua and for the memory of other fighting brothers and sisters. In Uruguay, the social movement Oyas Populares, People's Pots, will no longer be supported by the Ministry of Development. The decision came into force on February 28th. Minister Martin Lema said that a new stage was beginning and announced that the territorial feeding plan will be implemented by April. The National Food Institute will be responsible for delivering frozen meals to those who need them. Nobody remembers much about the pandemic. The pandemic went bad, very bad in 2020. We were alone facing it. And there we were all organizing the popular coordinator to see how we would face the situation. We managed to get the state to commit itself, but later the state tried to set everything up with the private sector, trying to undermine the popular organization from below, and they attacked us directly. Well, I don't know. They don't like soap kitchens. They like people to be more tame, calmer. I don't know. Let's take a short break, but first, remember you can follow us on our TikTok account at Dallas with English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates and more. Other studies coming up, stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. In Greece, a passenger train with more than 350 passengers collided with a freight train early Wednesday in the northern part of the country, killing 36 people and injuring more than 80 others so far. According to the National Fire Service, 85 people are reported injured, 25 of whom are in serious conditions after the accident, which also caused a fire. The agency also reported that the collision took place in the circumstances that have not been determined and that wagons one and two are completely disintegrated. Meanwhile, the fire department said that it mobilized 40 specialists and 17 vehicles. Authorities also stated that ambulances are operating also stated that ambulances are operating at the site, continuing the rescue and treatment work with the affected people. Greece has declared a three-day mourning period with flag at half-mast, starting Wednesday following the deadly incident. In the United States, a new train derailment has occurred, involving a freight train carrying propane in Manatee County, Florida. Authorities have responded to the emergency derailment. Four cars carrying gypsum and tanker truck carrying nearly 115,000 liters of propane overturned. Officials ordered the evacuation of the affected area to begin unloading the fuel. They also said that leaks or no leaks or injuries have been reported so far. This will be the seventh accident involving chemical materials in recorded in the United States in the last month alone. On Tuesday, students and activists gathered outside the United States Supreme Court in Washington, D.C., as the nine justices hearing a plan to provide student debt relief. The U.S. Supreme Court on Tuesday heard arguments on a proposal to eliminate nearly $400 billion in student debt. The court's ruling, expected before June the 30th, will decide whether millions of U.S. citizens will see up to $20,000 in debt disappear. So I'm a daughter of Brazilian immigrants, and so I don't come from generational wealth. And so I had to take out student loans in order to go to university. And so I have about $30,000 of student loan debt. And through Biden's cancellation plan, I will have two-thirds of my debt canceled. And so for me, that's a lot of relief. 
Right. So here in the United States, women hold the majority of student debt. And when you really get into that, black women hold the highest student debt burden of any other group in this country. And when you look at states like California, where we have Latina women who hold the bulk of student debt. So when we think about the people who work the hardest to get their college education, they enter the workforce and make less money than their peers. We also owe the most money for our education. We move on to other topics. Venezuelan Foreign Minister Ivan Hill asked the United Nations Organization to speak out on the case of Venezuelan diplomat Alex Zab, kidnapped in the United States. The vile kidnapping and extradition of the Venezuelan diplomat Alex Saab constitutes a tangible example of contempt for international law and the violation of human rights. Unjustifiably, today he remains prisoner in the United States and his current trial in a U.S. court is riddled with serious flaws and absurd distortions against which this council should speak out, for it constitutes a disgraceful violation of human rights and the Vienna Convention. And the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and his Azerbaijani counterpart Yehum Baraimov criticized the deployment of an expanded European Union monitoring mission to Armenia's volatile border with Azerbaijan. We see how the European Union is openly abusing its relations with Armenia and Azerbaijan, including pushing through its so-called mission on the territory of Armenia, raising serious doubts regarding its legitimacy. It raises many questions, including in terms of its function, mandate, duration, and the added value that this mission can bring to efforts to normalize relations between Azerbaijan and Armenia. In Moldova, demonstrators were reported against the government of President Maya Sandu and the rising cost of basic services. The protest was announced by deputies from the SOS party after they published their demand that the Moldovan government pay the people's gas and electricity bills for the three winter months, despite the efforts of the Moldovan police to prevent the march. The demonstrators advanced towards the center of the capital. And tell us our English continues to grow. You can now tune in from 33 different African countries through StarSat. Dial 461 and enjoy our Latin American alternative broadcast. One final short break and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. Israel is called for a nationwide protest against the judicial reform promoted by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. According to the protest leaders, the purpose of the action is to denounce the government's proposed judicial reform, which will significantly weaken the oversight, will significantly weaken the oversight power of the Supreme Court. Temporary strikes were ongoing around the country on March the 1st and will likely continue throughout March the 2nd. Protesters rallied outside the Eretz Israel Museum in Tel Aviv and outside Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's residence in Jerusalem. In this context, police on horseback clash with protesters near a popular mall and main train station in Tel Aviv. As a result, several demonstrators were arrested after allegedly throwing rocks and water bottles at officers. The strikes came as the government moves forward with a parliamentary vote on a bill that will weaken the Supreme Court. The legal overhaul has sparked an unprecedented uprising, with weeks of mass protests, criticism from legal experts, business leaders, as well as a concern from international allies. And Nigeria's Electoral Commission says ruling party candidate Bola Tinubu has won Saturday's election as opposition leaders decried the polls as rigged and called for a fresh vote.
Chinubu's win secured the former Lagos governor his lifelong ambition of the presidency of Africa's most populous democracy. While Nigeria's election was meant to be its fairest and most open contest to date, the electoral process encountered problems owing to new technology that did not function well and seemed to overwhelm Nigeria's notoriously inadequate communications network. Because of these failings, the main opposition parties of Atiku and Obi have rejected the results as fraudulent. It's already very glaring to all Nigerians, except we are making pretenses about it here, that this election is not free, fair, and credible. It's clear to all Nigerians that this election is already compromised. And therefore, if that is the wishes and aspirations of every Nigerian and is the general opinion, the best thing to do is for us to correct it and get it right by jettisoning what has been done and have it done properly because definitely this is not a credible election and it's not acceptable after 20 something years of our democracy to have this type of retrogressive step which professor yakubu has taken in nigeria it is dangerous and we have to take necessary steps for us and we have to take necessary steps because we don't also want nigerians to erupt into taking the law in their hands, we, the representatives of the people whom they have voted for our parties, will have a responsibility to do something. Nigerians on the streets were also worried about the results of the presidential elections, many of them accusing the electoral authorities of hiding the true results, others calling for new elections. What they are calling, people are not happy. Go out in the street and see how people are shouting. People is not happy. A lot of people are huge. huge. This is the reason why we are still calm, because of we want to know the end. But if things happen today and tomorrow, if there is nothing like final result, what people will see, they will not like. As you can see, you can see the whole thing is happening now in Nigeria. You all see like what's happening in Nigeria. You can see now in, in, in Delta State now, protests are going on in INEC office and the rest. So uh, you can see the whole protest shows that there's an issue. There's an issue in Nigeria. There's an issue in Nigeria. So for me, the election, the election should be cancelled. I agree to cancel the result because they, they did so much bad on it. The result they give us is so bad. Yeah, and it's not the original result. Our original result. So let them give us our original result. So this is this they are giving us is not original result. We have come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurienglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media for all the latest news. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Telesur English, I'm your anchor Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.